Newton, Einstein, Euclid, Pythagoras, and now we have Ribusa. <laughs> there is so much I love about this speech. I heard it last night, and it's gotten even better since last night. Raise your hand if you think John was confident. Raise your other hand. Keep your hand up. Simon says keep your hand up. Raise your other hand if you think he has tremendous presence. Now put your hands together and repeat. Fantastic job. He commands respect. He commands attention. He commands you to listen. He draws you in with his voice. And he draws you in with a smile that you can't help but wonder, what did he just eat? <laughs> this was a speech about getting to the point. He got to the point as soon as he stood here with an equation plastered across his stomach. A plus B plus C equals D. Even I can follow that one. It's simple. It's easy to follow. And then when he gave his speech, he did something that I love, is that you started with the end in mind, reverse engineered it to get to where you started. And then when he got to where you started, you went back through to get to where you ended. Phenomenal job. He also did something great when you brought in everybody who has ever spoken on the concept of success. There were 12 people he named in there. 12 people in 7 minutes. That's impressive. Take a breath. Fantastic job. There are a couple things I would love to see you work on for the next time you give this speech somewhere in a bigger audience. A plus B plus C equals D. Anchor each one of your letters so that as you go back and you get more in depth about each one of them, Every time you talk about being adaptable, belief, getting committed, all of those you can go back and you can refer to throughout your speech. The second one, you do give 12 different references in seven minutes. You touch on every one of them. You skimmed over 12 different people. Stop, get a little deeper, and tell us what do they mean to you. And the last one, I think this is the most important part of where to go forward with the speech. A plus B plus C equals D. In that equation, it implies that if any one of those is missing, the other two can make up for it to still get to your end result. But I don't believe that's what you're trying to tell us. What one thing in that equation has to be there no matter what. And let that be the thing that's the multiplier. A plus B times C equals D, for without C, all you have is zero. John, as Stuart Smiley once said, <laughs> they love you. You're good enough. Doggone it. You're a great speaker. <laughs> <laughs>